Hello everybody, it is me, Kink Radio, and welcome back to Kay's Plays. Um, we are playing uh, Dream Daddy, and in the last episode we were just about to go to Joseph's bar 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 uh, Barbecue, and so we are, let's just continue and get started. Alright, continue and get started. You know, super, super clear and concise. So, alright, um, it says... I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dog wafts through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set out our veggie plate down. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies! Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. This is Christian and Christy, they're oh. twins. They stare creepily and say nothing. Hey. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Uh, maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh, no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What's she doing here? Uh oh, and how can I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor Kay and his daughter Amanda. I'd shake her hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start afresh in the new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Amanda and I mill around and try to find some of the foods and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick up some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make uh, friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to go do... <laughs> but I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Dad. Ugh, they're going to talk about weather. Dad. Go do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well... Here goes nothing. I look around the party and am surprised to see some familiar, familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Didn't I beat that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead goth and beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Oh, hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. Uh, so Robert and Brian, Matt, Hugo, and Craig... Talk to Joseph and Damien. Burger time. Um, talk to Robert and Craig. Uh, Robert and Brian. I glance across the yard and it was Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Oh no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot! I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. <laughs> Kay, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. The game looks great and high def. Oh, boy. Kay, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. Right. We were just talking about the most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. I... And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside, making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have kit. Wait, what happened the last time? Robert takes, a little, Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the backcountry. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Comes from Kansas. They build him tough out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle and the rope bridge snaps. 
You could see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now i got a fireman carry a six-foot, 180-pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy. But you build a bomb with your brother's arms, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My friend Johnny Boy and I went inner tubing down a river and he lost a flip-flop. Miss that kid. Yeah. Brian and I laugh nervously. Or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. Ah. Whew. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have an emergency escape buttons. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess, and then we'll go get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert! Uh Wait a second, are you guys playing Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Trickers? Yeah. Amanda, and I love that show. It's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and setting the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such quality te reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. We're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gotta keep us from starving out there in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the- Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Little, little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat him with mock disgust. Let's go find killing for a fire. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, it's nice to... It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? <laughs> she just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have the habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. <laughs> Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to, by law. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them? They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Doing this part where all of the dads are together, it just makes me feel like if you've ever seen the Batman, like the original Batman episode with um, Adam West, it feels a lot like, okay, sorry, I had to make sure I was still recording. Um, it feels a lot like um, it's an episode where he's pretending to, air quote, pretending to be Batman and Bruce Wayne at the same time. He's just holding two different phones in his hands and he's going back and forth, like being, I'm Batman, but I'm also Adam West, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm Bruce Wayne, blah, blah, back and forth, but he doesn't change his voice at all. This feels a little bit like that, except I'm changing my voice and I'm like trying to keep them all together and it's very hard. <laughs> Okay, let's talk to Matt, oh. Hugo, and Craig. Okay, let's see if I can kind of maybe do some distinguishing voices from them. I don't know if I can. Uh, Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over and say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate at the time and place. And try to take something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be bis so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Let's just talk to Craig. I'm just going to talk to Craig. <laughs> I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. 
How'd resistance training how resistance training go the other day? Great! Little River here's a great cheerleader, aren't you, Tiny Bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! I'm sorry for pooping on you! She must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How are you settling in? Uh, almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really get myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to leave the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Okay, how are you liking the neighborhood? Everybody has the same voice, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly. Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them to little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Hmm, nope. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> hey, Kay, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmencita. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop. And my old college friend and, uh, your teacher. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize oh. we were neighbors. Yep. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her ways out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son what? go? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes Whoa. go wide. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette and then flicks it into um. the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. And then the and then the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread to my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. Uh. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hey, everybody, sorry about that. Kay, this is my son, Ernest. Hello? Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep into his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Oh. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in the eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Um, yeah, good for you. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. <sighs> Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems... Nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly nice. resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See, that right there? You can't say that. Oh. <laughs> My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we have to be the cool dads? Oh. I, uh... Don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads we've become the machine we were once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. Just... Doesn't work. I mean, look oh. at me in earnest. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right, but it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but 
there might come a time where it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Don't let us eat up your time, Kay. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. And talk to Joseph and Damien. I spot Joseph and Joseph chatting with a guy from Dead Gotham Beyond by the Grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. And it complements the crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an uh, interesting oh. choice. Thank you. I'm very proud of my abode. <laughs> Kay! I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, I think I saw you in Dead Goth Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth its lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating oh. indeed. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's a... Uh, okay, man. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Uh, yes. Uh, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? Goth... I think for a second. I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older <sighs> kids in the neighborhood. Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. It wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would be more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. Bats are cool, though. Oh, pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks for putting this on. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch, at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. My, do you know how to treat a lady? Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Ha hey! Won't you come play with us? Uh... Come play with us forever. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Christian and Christine, or Christy, slowly back away. Where do you think they got that from? Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. I think it might have taped over a VeggieTales VHS with a shining, who knows. She takes another sip of her wine. Where's Krish? Wasn't he with you? You... I had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. I have squeezed four little... Sweetheart, would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. Mary. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Ah, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Kay yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Uh, Mr. Christensen. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Uh, coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. <laughs> Make that two veggie burgers. Do you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad, that's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill. Just a hint of tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. Looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Uh, yep. I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. Just thought it looked sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man. Joseph was a way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. And without further ado, let's work some magic. 
Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He works faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. You probably didn't know this, Kay, but Joseph around here is... Bleh. Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's... Ungrelievable. Hey. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't hey. catch up. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. A mustard we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Mm. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too... cheesy. Please stop. That was a lot of voices at once. <laughs> All of the children of the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly good cooked cheeseburgers. Uh. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? I feel like there's a real community here. It totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a oh. killing. Hey! Why don't you add us all in Dad Book? Dad Book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. Each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, this is the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. I feel like I was at a networking event. I'm gonna get a LinkedIn notification out of this. I just know it. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox. Metaphorically hmm. speaking. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Dad tip number 84. Couldn't read it. <laughs> too fast. Amanda and I arrive at home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans yeah. for this evening? Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that, and I will never do that. Okay. Do you have any plans tonight? I, uh, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm going to work on stuff. Work on some stuff. <laughs> work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity, celebrity, celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil, like making baked Alaskas all day instead of getting any, f uh, instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It's just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with him. With, uh, I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone was almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her to better than to text or drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I earned it after a long day of... socializing. I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. D do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. 
Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Meat Hell are not only as not only assuaging my anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I sighed to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my texts? Sorry, someone was at the door for a second. It was probably my neighbors. <laughs> Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda Ann! Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I was scared. You weren't responding, and it was just... It was just like when your dad... I have to stop myself from tearing up. Oh, Dad, I didn't mean to... I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just... Please don't do that again. Uh, uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said kept echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Team radio? Team radio. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in the time it takes me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's dad book? It's a social media platform. Wait. What? What's a social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad, fo dad book profile on my own. All right. I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. All right, pops. We'll fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. On a Friday night, you are most likely to polish and sort my coin collection. I do collect coins. <laughs> Netflix and grill, baby. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. My dad, Jesus Christ, torment my children with dad puns. Sink into blissful oblivion. <laughs> um, Probably Netflix. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? My trusty grill. I lost the lot. The lost shaker of salt. Cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. What are your turn-ons? Strong dad arms. Ten shoes with long white socks. A well-manicured long street smarts. Street smarts! <laughs> John Mulaney. <laughs> Top tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. Strong dad arms. What, do you want to, what did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals and instructions. A salty boat captain. A pro skater who is also an astronaut. A good father or the president of space. Pro skater who is also an astronaut. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? War documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. Well, that was, that's fucking Robert if I ever saw it. Um, let's do old comedies that haven't aged well. What's your ideal date? Napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle together, eating healthy dinner at 4 p.m. Trying to geocache, but getting hopelessly lost arson. <laughs> Being emotionally vulnerable. Napping together, Jesus Christ. What do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan, my sick vape, a book of word jumbles and a pen, a cool knife, my crippling low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes. <laughs> a cool knife. 
spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories, how proud I am of my child, potential ends to the world, if I ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill, when I can, it, when I can get my next cup of coffee, lawnmower modifications, uh, conspiracy theories. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You so much just one of them. Or more than one of them. All these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I'll promise I'll make some friends. And then he gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. Welcome. You've Welcome. Got dads. You've got dads. Dad Manda. <laughs> Hi, Dad. It's your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you find a for Dad book. They recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take, take care not to miss them. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad book? Why, Kay, I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me with your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though I, of course, I'm flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait, no. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holy on this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? Mm, I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation ended. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, so actually, we're going to end this episode here. Uh, we will go on our first date with Robert in the next episode, which I'm really excited about, because that whole introduction was just me doing a bunch of the different dad voices, and not a lot of them are great. I don't know necessarily. Um, but with Robert, I've done the Robert voice before, so that will be easier for me to switch back and forth from me and Robert. And I also really like Robert's dates. So uh, thank you everybody so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, you guys. Bye-bye.